In today's video, I'm going to be talking about why this iPad Pro has been an essential tool for me in learning data science and pretty much anything else, and it's been with me through the ups and downs studying for a second bachelor degree in computer science. This iPad Pro I have is of the largest screen size, 12.9 inches. I've had this iPad for almost 3 years, and it's an older model, a 2018 model. But nowadays, you can find newer version with better specs with pretty much the same price. You might agree with me that being in a data science field also means to be forever a student because the field is developing so so fast. There's always new stuff to learn about. In many occasions, you're expected to be a mathematician, a computer scientist, a programmer, and a business developer all at once. Besides studying for a computer science degree, I also often take online courses to learn new skills. And this iPad Pro has been my to-go device for watching lectures, videos, and for reading. I think there's several factors that make this iPad Pro an ideal tool for watching, reading, and studying in general. Firstly, you can store PowerPoints, lecture notes, ebooks, and pretty much anything on this iPad, which makes it so easy and convenient to carry all the materials with you and study wherever you want. I always have a bunch of PDF books stored on my iPad on data science and machine learning, in addition to other books stored on my reading app. Having everything in one place makes it easy to find something. Quite frankly, even after more than five years working in the data science field, I still often need to look back at some chapters of the books, and this iPad Pro has proved to be really convenient in those occasions. The large screen display is also a huge advantage. If I want to take notes while watching or reading something, I can also use the split view to watch lectures on one side and take notes on the other side. Additionally, the true color and high resolution screen display also makes it very pleasant for the eyes. The screen of this iPad Pro has a refresh rate of 120Hz, which means the screen refreshes 120 times per second. And this makes the display feel smoother and more responsive than other devices. I didn't know that iPhone had only 60Hz refresh rate, which is much slower. I think studying on an iPad is so much more fun and convenient, so it feels less like work for me and more like playing. If I have worked for almost 10 hours at work on a computer, I surely wouldn't want to sit for another 2 hours in the evening in front of a computer again. But I can convince myself to pick up my iPad and curl up in bed or lie on a sofa to watch or read something. In my study, there are often a lot of materials to go through, and this has really helped me against procrastination and being overwhelmed later. One of the main motivations for me to get an iPad is to take notes. A few years ago, I decided to go paperless for learning data science, mostly because I couldn't manage to organize physical notes anymore. There is just too much information to take in, and there are so many sources of information that can make you feel overwhelmed and lost as soon as you start. And this iPad has come into rescue. For structured notes, I usually use Notion. I usually type out the notes while watching lectures. It's also pretty easy and intuitive to organize study notes here. Sometimes I come across really useful articles or videos, I'd embed them directly into my notes. For handwritten notes, I like to use Procreate, which is actually a drawing app. With this app, you essentially have in your hand hundreds of pen brushes and tools without actually have to carry them in your pocket. So you can make highly customizable notes, writing formulas, drawing diagrams and graphs easily. Unlike paper notes, you can easily customize the notes adding, changing, and moving parts after math. You can also export the notes later as image and save it somewhere else like Notion. There are of course many other fantastic note-taking apps out there, such as the standard notes app that come with any Apple devices. A lot of people also recommend good notes on Notability, which are also highly optimized apps for note-taking. I personally think it's not that important which app you use to take notes. It's more important what works best for you and how you make the best out of it. Writing on an iPad might feel a bit weird at first because you are writing on the glass, but it's very easy to get used to. Or you may also want to get a paper-like screen protector to make it feel more like paper. So far, I'm fine with a bare screen. Here, I'm using a second-generation Apple Pencil that's paired directly with this iPad. It's very fluid, and I'd even say it works better than the traditional pen. You know, it never runs out of ink or gives uneven ink. It actually makes me enjoy taking notes on a piece of 
of glass. If you want to learn more about how to take digital notes, Skillshare is a great place to start. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes on videography, illustration, graphic design, entrepreneurship, and even data science. When I first brought this iPad, I had no idea how to use it for note taking. So I went on Skillshare to take some basic note taking classes and later some advanced illustration tools and techniques on iPads, which you might have seen me doing a few times in some of my videos. There are many good quality classes on Skillshare and you can learn about a variety of apps and tools and software that you can use. In the description below, you can check out the link for your one month free trial on Skillshare. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. You probably never thought it's feasible or even a good idea to do coding on an iPad, but it's actually a great option when you don't easily have access to a computer. In many cases, you just need a decent internet connection. You may not be able to install directly R or Python on your iPad, but there are several ways to run Python and R on your iPad. For example, you can use a web-based platform to code such as Google Colab. Here I'm running a Colab notebook on iPad Pro. The commands are actually running on Google Cloud, not on your iPad, so you don't need to worry about the iPad running out of memory. This is similar to coding on a Jupyter notebook that's hosted externally, for example on the Coursera server. I've also tried out some Jupyter notebook apps for iPad such as Carnets. Together with a Bluetooth keyboard, it's become my favorite lightweight setup for learning coding and running some small notebooks. The older versions of this iPad Pro such as this one has Apple Bionic chips versus the Apple M1 chip in the newer version in 2021. So if you've got an M1 iPad Pro, it can technically do any computations that your M1 MacBook can do. But even with these older specs, this iPad Pro is still blazingly fast. The first 20 videos on my channel were edited completely on this iPad iPad. I could just load hours of footage and edit videos on this iPad with absolutely no lags or any memory issues. But as you can imagine, it's not a perfect setup and you are subjected to the limitations of the video editing apps that are available for iPad OS. But I'm still amazed how well it worked out for me given that my videos often have a lot of pictures and layers and effects. The high resolution and true color screen display makes watching videos more pleasant. But I must say this speakers are also a very important factor here. You probably don't always want to pick up an earphones whenever you study, especially when you're already sitting at home. So having a good set of speakers is really a plus. I found that good sounds makes it more comfortable to watch lectures and so you can study for longer. It's easier to focus on the content if you don't have to constantly try to understand what's being said. This iPad Pro has a squat speaker design. It has four stereo speakers around the edges of the iPad so the sound fires evenly outwards. The speakers are loud, clear, and the bass is surprisingly good. The sound coming from these speakers is actually not much different from my small Bluetooth speaker. If you have used Apple devices like iPhones or MacBooks, you must have been familiar with the Apple ecosystem and features like iCloud syncing, app syncing, and airdropping. It's super convenient to take notes on your iPad and have it instantly synced on your MacBook and iPhone. Additionally, all the books and materials I stored on my MacBook are also available to me on my iPad so that I can have access to them anytime without opening my laptop. Sometimes I also come across really interesting data science articles or papers that I want to read further. I can just pick up my iPad and continue reading. All in all, this iPad Pro has been a game changer for me when it comes to learning data science and picking up new skills. It saved me tons of time capturing information and exchanging information across devices and it makes learning more fun and enjoyable. However, it's not for everyone. If you don't take a lot of notes or you prefer to use a laptop for learning, then you might not get a lot of benefits from owning an iPad. These iPad Pros will set you back at least $800, not to mention the Apple Pencil, so it might not be the best investment for you. But if you decide to get one, I've added the link to the iPad Pro that's similar to the one I have in the description below, so you can check it out. Thank you so much for watching. Watching and see you in next video. Bye bye!